ever Belena. Hi, I'm Giselle Dossi. I'm the chairman and CEO of Ever Belena Cosmetics. CEO of Ever Belena. Race here. Hey, although my I'm background is Chinese, I'm the chairman and CEO of Ever Belena Cosmetics. CEO of Ever Belena Cosmetics. Hey, although my background is Chinese, I'm the chairman and CEO of Ever Belena Cosmetics. So, Ever Belena Cosmetics. Hey, although my background is Chinese, I'm the chairman and CEO of Ever Belena Cosmetics. So, Ever Belena and work as a good Filipino citizen. I hope my little uh, sharing and wisdom will help uh, our next generation uh, to know what we're doing and where we're coming from. And uh, looking forward to see the younger generation. I'm inviting everybody to watch Chinoy TV Presents. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart, only on CNN Philippines. I'm Kenneth Kobonpoe and I'm an industrial designer. I grew up into a sort of a pseudo-traditional Chinese family. My father was a traditional Chinese businessman and my mother was working always from the house. She was a designer who built furniture literally from our backyard. Every night before going to bed, she would read stories of fairy tales and different stories from faraway lands. After I drifted off to sleep with these stories, the next morning would find me wanting to recreate these stories using the materials that I found. Since I grew up in the Philippines, Everything that I know, my inspiration, uh, my whole history, my culture, um, everything that I do is inspired by the Philippines. I feel very honored and feel very proud to be part of a campaign to try to rediscover and find out what is it that makes a Chinoy. Watch me on Chinoy TV Presents Chinese by Blood. Filipino by heart, only on CNN Philippines. Chris Tan, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm also a life coach and I also act and I dabble in cryptocurrency. So growing up as a Chinoy was a little bit challenging because I had very sinked eyes and uh, I would always be made fun of because my eyes were so small. So I had a little bit of an insecurity about that growing up. I also am very Moreno, so that was a weird mix and people found that very weird and made fun of that in my school. Well, the good thing about me was I'm never really one to allow anyone to talk down on me or make fun of me. I actually looked at it as a challenge to be accepted, not just by me, but by my peers, and to look beyond the physical. This is something that I think is important to be able to get out there so that people understand that Chinois are also Filipinos. And we are more Filipino than we are Chinese, actually, because this is where we grew up. Uh, although we bring our Chinese culture as a part of it, our hearts are still here in the Philippines. Watch me on Chinoy TV presents Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart, only on CNN Philippines. My name is Karen Ibasco, you miss her 2017. I'm a host, a speaker, and an image consultant. I grew up in a family where beauty wasn't so much focused on because in a Chinoy family, it was more of career. So I grew up not knowing that I look good or I can look good. I was just focused on studies, even though that's the kind of tradition I grew up. In time, I was built with the right values. As you grow up, you would understand more of beauty and in the processes or situations that you go through in life. But values being founded in you would be the greatest foundation that your parents can ever give you. And that's how I started. Values and education were the things that were instilled in me as young as I was. I 
I never thought that I have made that impact in my community. And I continually want to share my story and encourage other people to do the same in their own journey because we can achieve more together and we can encourage more people to be in the path where they are called and created to be. Watch me on Chinoy TV presents Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart, only on CNN Philippines. Hi, I'm Ian Loreños. Uh, I'm a TV director and a filmmaker. I grew up in a, you can say, typical uh, Chinese-Filipino family. My dad was a merchant in the Visoria and my mom was a housewife. And we all studied in a Chinese-Filipino school. You can say that uh, my family was somehow in between traditional and modern Chinese-Filipino family. Modern in a way that they didn't force us to be the usual, you know, study in a Chinese school, go to a business university or college and then do business. Rather, they just, you know, instill us that not just to be a businessman, but, you know, to be a good human being. I think that was very special to me, you know, living in a community where all stereotypically taught to be business people. My parents taught us the values of uh, helping taught us the values of, uh, you know, good reputation. I'm happy to share uh, my story to all of you, and I'm just proud to be here and to represent the Chinois. Watch me on Chinoy TV Presents, Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart, only on CNN Philippines. Hello, I'm Yvette Tan. I am a writer. I write horror um, fiction, so I have a couple of books. When you grow up Chinoy, you don't know you're growing up Chinoy because you kind of live in a bubble. To be fair to my parents, my parents raised me very well, but I guess there, there was always the pressure to be a certain person that I wasn't, not just in the family, but also outside. Because of that, I got bullied. I didn't know how to deal with people. So I think this is what contributed to me escaping into books. I write a lot of fiction. The thing about fiction is it may not be real. It may, be, it may come from somebody else's imagination, but it's a bridge for the reader to think in a different way, to see things from a different point of view. And I think that holds power. I am so proud and so honored to be part of this campaign that promotes Filipino-Chinese culture because it's about time that people learned about Chinois and our contributions to society. Watch me on Chinoy TV presents Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart, only on CNN Philippines. My name is Stan C. I am a sportscaster and a voice talent. So when I was growing up, I was bullied because of my name. I was bullied because I was bookish. I was considered a nerdy kid. And in a way, pag na-color ka na into your little box, hindi na nila ma-i-imagine na you can step out of your box. When I was being bullied, it was really people making me feel bad about myself, making me feel that I shouldn't have any self-confidence, any self-esteem. So it wasn't necessarily about like what I wanted to be or who I am. It was more of who they thought I was. My goal was to reinvent myself. So that's why I wanted to do everything I wanted to do. What I've seen in my career is that a lot of the opportunities that opened up for me was because I put myself out there and I simply asked, even if the opportunity didn't exist. One of the things I really believe in is representation. It's something that I really stood for and wanted to push for. And I'm glad that this season we're expanding beyond coverage of Chinois inside Metro Manila. So it's great that we're hearing all these stories because it adds more diversity and more flavor into the overall picture of what being a Chinoy is. I've been 
a TV and events host for 15 years already. I'm also a content creator. I do lifestyle and travel vlogs. And I'm also an entrepreneur. I'm very fortunate in the fact that my parents are very supportive with my career of choice. Because as a Filipino Chinese, the, the usual stereotype is you're expected to be a doctor, an accountant, an engineer, and of course, an entrepreneur. But for us, me and my siblings, we all had different career paths and my parents were very, very supportive of each of our choices. So they would bring me to all the auditions and up until I was starting already and struggling to get a project on TV, they were there for me. They were truly 100% supportive and gave me 100% unconditional love and support. I I'm very lucky in that aspect. truly am humbled to be part of this roster to share my story as a modern Chinoy and to find representation for their own stories and their own journeys. Catch me on Chinoy TV Presents Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Art on CNN Philippines. I'm Father Ari D. of the Society of Jesus. I'm president of Saber School, a Chinese Filipino Catholic Jesuit school. My family moved to the suburbs, which San Juan was at that time, in the early 1960s. I think for my grandfather, that was like a step up, moving from Chinatown to the suburbs. No, there was nothing in Little Baguio in San Juan at that time. You look at the old pictures and, and you realize that. No? So because of that move, then they were very far from Chinatown, from the Chinese schools where my own parents studied. So they wanted to preserve a Chinese language and culture. Thankfully, by that time, by the early 60s, both Saber School and Immaculate Conception Academy were already in San Juan. They also made the move to the suburbs. So that's where uh, I was sent, along with my brothers. We you know, grew up in a Catholic environment where faith was something that was part of life. You know, we went to Catholic school. So I, I grew up in that kind of environment. What makes me proud as a Chinoy is the different layers of our identity. We belong to different worlds, for most of them Chinese and Filipino. And that's something to celebrate and be proud of. Watch me on Chinoy TV presents Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart, only in CNN Philippines. Hi, I'm Rain Smika. I'm a fashion model and I model professionally and internationally. I got into modeling uh, when I was 15. I actually didn't expect to get into modeling. I was rather scouted by a talent agent. And when I tried it out, it, I think no one actually knew what was modeling <laughs> in the Chinoy community. Well, I would get comments like, what is she doing? It also made me question myself, what am I doing? <laughs> I was just having fun and learning from the mentors who discovered me in the talent agency. And eventually, I found a place for myself in this confusing world. I found that modeling actually made me found this group of people where I felt like I belonged to. It's really exciting because I get to share my story to um, everyone, to the Chinoy community, and it allows me to also learn more about myself and inspire others. And I hope a lot more of the Chinois would get into the type of field I did in modeling. Watch me as Chinoy TV presents Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart, only on CNN Philippines.
Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. Hashtag Beyond Borders is brought to you by Doña Maria Brown Rice, My Kind of Rice, from SL Agritech. BA Securities, your trading partner in Asia Pacific. Dash Cargo, propelling possibilities. don't realize how much work, time, and effort is actually put into content creation. I am not here to say that we have the world's hardest job in the world. I mean, we're no like doctors or lawyers or like, we're definitely, there are so many other jobs in the world that's more difficult than what we're doing. But I also feel that there's a lot of misconception that for bloggers and for content creators, it's we just earn money like this. They think that it's just take photo, post, that's it. People don't understand that we're basically kind of like a one-stop marketing shop. We do the negotiations, we answer inquiries, we source our own props, source our own materials, source our own locations. So these things that we shoot for brands, they're not just things that, okay, I'll post this. These are actually pitches that we have to give to the brands. We have to give them storylines. We have to give them storyboards, scripts, and all of these, one person does it. Hi, I'm Camille Ka, a content creator and entrepreneur. very traditional, super strict Filipino Chinese home. I mean, all my friends know this from school. Like, they really know my parents by name because they know that my parents are so strict. They're very involved in my life. I grew up speaking Chinese. At home, we weren't allowed to speak Filipino to our parents. We had to speak Hokkien or Fukien. We had to do really well with our Chinese studies because my parents really feel that it's important for us to, you know, have a connection to our roots and to be able to pass down all the different traditions and of course values. I would say that I grew up with a lot of structure in my life. There were a lot of like rules, which I don't resent because I feel like because of these rules and structures, I'm able to be the kind of person that I am. This is why I'm also like more determined, more disciplined because of the kind of household that I grew up in. Ever since I was a kid, I've always been interested in fashion. I can't really pinpoint that specific moment because as far as I can remember, I've always been into it. Like, siguro my earliest memory, let's say my earliest memory is three years old, and I already feel that I was already into fashion as a three-year-old. And I remember when my mom was still choosing outfits for my brother and sister, I was already being left alone to choose my own outfits. I guess it also helps because my mom, she took clothes seriously and dressing up and putting makeup on seriously. Like she made me appreciate the beauty behind fashion. I remember she would always instill upon me that no matter where you go, you have to be dressed properly. Even if you're in your school uniform and everyone's dressed the same way, you have to always make sure that if your uniform is supposed to be tucked in, it's supposed to be tucked in neatly. And she never belittled fashion. I think that's that's one of the most important things. She never belittled it. She never thought of fashion as trivial. Up till now, actually. So I started this on my senior year during Ateneo and I thought that it was just something I wanted to do on the side. Kumbala parang last hurrah ko siya before I actually go into like 9 to 5 corporate job. All this time, I really thought that Coexist was just a hobby. 
parang we got a lot of traction from it. Magazines started featuring Coexist. I got a lot of features as well as myself. So this this was all happening simultaneously, like when I was about to graduate. That's why I was like, you know what? This business looks like it's profitable. So mom, why don't I get some like official training for this? So I want to do like fashion school and focus on Coexist before I head on to the real world. I, I was really lucky because my mom was super game for me to go to fashion school. She wanted to be a makeup artist when she was younger. Ni lang siya ng parents niya. So she had that frustration. So she knew how I felt. And that's why she was so supportive of me going to fashion design school. So when I was a kid, is there a profession that you wanted me to become? Did you want me to become a teacher? Or did you want me to become a businesswoman, a doctor? Dream for me. None? Whatever you want. Whatever I want. While I was in fashion design school, I continued coexist, and then ne I just never ended it. And slowly, I realized that this is actually a viable career for me. Exist, I wanted to find a way to promote my own designs or pro promote my own line without having to spend a lot because siempre Chinese, so kuripa tayo. So I wanted to market my designs without having to spend like a huge thing because again, at that time, I was thinking it was going to be like a side hobby lang. Sayang laman if I'm going to spend so much. At that time, uso pa yung lookbook, Shiktopia. It's this website where people post their looks. It's kind of like Instagram, but it was all fashion. So that's where I started wearing Coexist and that's where people started to identify me as a blogger because I myself never identified myself as a blogger because I always thought, nah, I don't have my own blog. This is just Shiktopia and lookbook. I'm just posting Coexist while I'm trying to grow my community there so that I'd get more audience for my own line, I also had to post my own looks aside from my own designs. I slowly became the blogger that people labeled me to be. When I started blogging, I didn't think of it as a career because at that time, Bloggers weren't really doing it full-time as well. Like, everyone was just doing blogging on the side. And you could say that I got into the blogging industry or the content creation because of my love for fashion design. And ironically, it's now my main career. And fashion design has actually stepped back. <laughs> my mom was my biggest supporter when I told her I wanted to become a fashion designer. But You're when done. I wanted to become a fashion blogger, what was your first impression? No show business. No show business. <laughs> <laughs> to my parents' defense, at that time, because blogging was so new. So it was just, I think with all parents, naman, with all Chinoy parents, with all parents, doesn't have to be Chinoy. When they're against something their child is doing, creatively, I think it's only because they come from a different generation and at that time, they didn't have that. So it's harder for them to understand. The key here is really to try to make them understand what you're doing. I kept trying to explain to them over and over again and I brought them into my world. If there are events that I could bring them to, I would bring them so that they would see what I'm doing, that there's nothing wrong with it, that this is how things work. It was so surprising to me that my dad, my dad who's so strict, was actually, like he actually understood my work as a blogger faster than my mom. Like, he was the one who's actually telling my mom that, you know what, she's on to something. I think he saw the business side to it, especially when he started seeing contracts. So when my dad saw that, hey, I'm actually earning and this is actually a business, he understood it. And he saw the potential, he saw the business side to it. And the funny thing is, when the features started coming in and their other Chinoy friends, their other Chinoy, like, aunties and uncles will tell them, hey, my daughter is a huge fan of your daughter. You'd see that they're already, like, beaming with, like, like they're starting to like, oh, that's, yeah, that's my kid. I'm so proud. Especially my mom. Every chance she gets, she's try to show off na, yeah, my daughter does this. She's been featured here, here, here. It was really a process. I was really lucky that when I started blogging, I had like peers around me who were starting to do it at the same time as me. If I could pinpoint like the pinaka OG of all the OGs, I would say it's Trisha Gossington, who's also like part Chinese, part Filipino. She really was the first one out of all of us who took blogging seriously and really turned blogging into a business. I could genuinely say that my peers, actually, all of us, like Lorene, Chris, um, David, 
all of us, we started this not knowing that we could actually earn from it. We were just really young kids who wanted to show other people like we love dressing up, we love fashion. Without really thinking about getting famous, all the likes or the hits or the stats or the money, none of that because again, at that time, this does not exist. I remember when I first had my magazine cover, that was insane. Never in my wildest dreams did I ever think I would land on the cover of a major publication here in the Philippines doing what I do. Never ever, because always like when you look at magazines, especially before now it's more normal, but during our time, mga ihot iha, <laughs> all the people that would get featured are just models, celebrities, or like socialites. Never really, like you'd never think that bloggers, like young bloggers like us in our early 20s would land these covers. I think at the end of the day, social media is here to stay. Because as long as there's an audience that will consume this, then social media is really here to stay. It's so hard to tell where the industry is going because so much has changed in 10 years. I think it's just going to be exciting, but I hope that it's not going to be so overwhelming. I feel that's my fear. My fear is for social media to become too much. For us, you have to try to stay relevant. It's That's, I think, the hardest thing for you because especially now, people consume things online so fast. Never lose sight of your audience and never lose sight of the reason why you started this. So that's always been my grounding factor all throughout these years. No matter what platform I'm trying out or no matter what type of content I'm trying out, I always remember at the end of the day why I started and end my audience. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. Hashtag Beyond Borders is brought to you by Cardinal Santos Medical Center. Evergreen Cereal AgriPro Premier Nutrition Inc. Global Diesel and GU Engineering Nation Paper Products and Printing Corporation Ford Tractor Philippines, your long-term agriculture partner Japan Parts Trading Center Dash Cargo, propelling possibilities for your copying and printing needs, it must be sharp. Philippine Si Pyok Song Lim Musical Federation Association. Crimson Hotel Alabang. Chua Beng Tang. Alejandro Ko. Jimmy C. Nang Family. Enrique Chua. Li Poi Chin. Albert Cole, Stephen Sia, Rosalina Yasai, Anson Tan, Sherwin Choi. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. Yanni and I actually met in a very movie-like setting. We met on the plane. We were actually seatmates. It was super duper accidental. And he claims he already saw me at the airport and no love at first sight though. Sha. And then he saw that I was coming and he was super duper chatty. But all this time that he was chatty, he claims that I was the most unresponsive person ever. Like I seemed so uninterested. I guess a huge reason for this, looking back, is because of how I was raised. I mean, my mom, probably, if she was there, she'd be like, why are you talking to that stranger? Don't talk to that stranger. Are you flirting with that stranger? Like, she's super conservative. And I also never really thought that he was hitting on me. I really actually thought he was just talking to me. So, and then, um, he eventually got my number, but my work number, because again, my mom's voice was inside my head. It took us a month before we started going out. And it was Takas Pa. I couldn't tell my mom that I was gonna go on a date. Because my mom also didn't understand the concept of dating, I feel. Like for her, it's really courtship. Not going out on dates. Courtship is you coming to our house and getting to know me at our house. Eventually, when I felt that he was like, I think 
this guy could have some potential. That's when I introduced him to my parents and told my mom. I remember, I think it was a Sunday, and I told my mom, Mom, tomorrow there's someone who's coming to the house. And I remember the first thing she told me was, Filipino? Chinese? No, he's not Chinese. Oh, he's Filipino? I said, no, he's not Filipino. What? He's a foreigner? And so there. So you could probably tell from the first answers of my mom, it wasn't an easy peasy thing. I feel that for their generation, because they really do prefer for their kids to marry someone in the Chinoy community as well. I think it really stems from their fear of the, you know, the values and the Ch Filipino Chinese tradition to be passed down. They just really want to keep the heritage alive, to keep the traditions alive. I never want to hide anything from my parents. So I really wanted them to get to know this potential boyfriend. And that's why when I brought him to the house, of course, I had to brief him. I'm very lucky that Yoni, my husband, is very familiar with this setting because he actually used to live in China for like a few months. He used to also know how to speak Mandarin, but unluckily for me, by the time I met him, he didn't remember so much of them anymore. But I still had, you know, I really still tried to zero in on that topic. Like I really told my parents, oh, he went to China. He was really interested in Chinese studies. He he studied Mandarin, mga ganon. Para nga mga ng points. When he came to the house, um, it wasn't a very warm welcome. It was more of a interrogation. I expected it as well, um, and Yoni also expected it as well. He knew that he had to climb the Great Wall of China, being my parents. I was very lucky that he was very patient and he understood the concept here. And he was so willing to go through all of that for me. So <laughs> he really took his time. I told him that for my parents to like you, you have to keep visiting the house. You have to come here as much as you can, not just once a week, but as much as you can. So I remember that time we were still living in the north and he was living in the south. He would always travel, like always go to my house so that he could have dinner there. Even though the welcome wasn't so warm, he'd always still show his face and always still try to keep conversing with them and really try to keep talking with them. And he really was so patient. And when we go out, I'd say I have a curfew. I had a curfew until we were married and he understood this and he knew that we couldn't travel together. He also understood this. He was willing to go through all of that and at the end of the day, love conquers all. Conquers my parents. Okay, so we're officially Chinese engaged. How is your first Kinghood experience? A lot of people, a lot of food, a lot of tradition. It's also actually his birthday. Happy it's, birthday. Thank you. So we're officially Chinese engaged. There are a lot of new things that we experienced. Of course, we didn't really know what was happening until it finally happened. But we know how important this is for my parents, most in particular. So which is why we agreed to doing a thing hood even if we don't know anything about it. And and to us, it doesn't really matter that much. But to my parents, they matter so so much. And now your parents as well, officially. Yeah, true, 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 true. true. <laughs> so that's what a thing hood is. Historically, uh, it's when the girl's family officially gives away the girl to the guy's family and that's when officially they count the guy as their own son and his family would count me as their own daughter and that's when you officially call each other's parents mom and dad. my parents brought me up I really I really do and I appreciate how my parents brought me up but I think I would take pointers here and there and then inject my own way of bringing up my future my bring up Sienna and our future kids you know I'm off I'm from a different generation and I feel that I'm more adapted to the way of life now and also here in the Philippines because I was you know I grew up with different people not just within the Chinoy community I grew up with other people and other races, other environments. So I feel that's why I want to strike like a perfect balance lang because I really do feel that I don't want to be too strict to my kids, but there will be structure. I will forever cherish all the values that I got from my parents and will try to instill that upon my kids. But at the same time, I will also create new traditions and new ways of bringing up my own kids. 
I guess um, I won't be as strict talaga. So, like if my kid tells me that I want to do like dancing lessons, I'd let her do dancing lessons because girl, it was always a cry fest with my parents when I tell them that, mom, I want to join a cheering squad. Every year, I have negotiations with my parents because my mom would say, hindi ka pwede cheering squad. Like, she had all these like very old school thinking. Or like, mom, I want to do singing lessons. Hindi pwede mag artista ka. More like that. So I think I would like to be more. Let them explore. Let them let them try what they want to try. But at, but I will still be like watching. My parents are really like like this. So I'll try to be just a little bit like just a little close, but not so much. You know. Feel confused, but ready to go. We have been brief. Yeah, interesting to see what's gonna happen. I also always try to tell my husband, Yoni, that if you think I'm becoming too overbearing, because of course I grew up in this environment, even if you say that you want to do certain things differently from your parents, you can't help but do the same things. Because you know, that's what, you know, you grew up there. That's the environment you got to know. My husband knows when to remind me because I always tell him that, remind me if I'm doing things that I've always said that I don't want to do. And then something that my parents um, did that I also want to do for my kids is that I want them to be really respectful and to be really mindful. Yo, that's the word I've been looking for, mindful. Mindful of your actions, mindful of your words. I want you to still, at the end of the day, when you see someone older than you, be always respectful. When you see someone who needs help, go help them. If you know that you're going to this certain environment and you're supposed to be acting a certain way, act a certain way. So I think that's something that I want to instill upon them, to always be mindful. Be mindful of how you present yourself to the world. My plans for the next 10 years Definitely have another kid, Year of the Dragon. <laughs> we're aiming for Year of the Dragon. Um, have our own home, which we're currently building. Have this business that's really successful, that's aside from content creation. Have kids who know their Chinoy values and who know how to speak Chinese still at the end of the day. I really want that for my kids. The moment that my parents understood what I wanted to do, and they started to trust me and trust that they were able to really already plant the seeds that they needed to plant and let me just flourish on my own. That's when everything really came together. For other like Chinois like me who want something more unconventional and for parents who are having, Chinois parents who are having a hard time to wrap themselves around this new unconventional idea that their kid wants to do. I think at the end of the day, you have to remember that you did your best as a parent to plant these seeds and you have to let them grow. Give them the chance to show you how great of a parent you are to them, that they're able to actually become the person you wanted them to become in their own way. It's funny that even though I went through the unconventional route and became a content creator, now I'm going back to being an entrepreneur and doing what my parents actually wanted me to do starting different businesses and really going into like the business world. It's funny that I somehow made my way image that they wanted me to be, but in my own time and it, at my own terms. And I feel that this was really what was meant for me. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. Hashtag Beyond Borders is brought to you by Cardinal Santos Medical Center. Ever Belena PG Flex Linoleum and Maruyama Tarpaulin Evergreen Cereal AgriPro Premier Nutrition Inc. Global Diesel and GU Engineering Nation Paper Products and Printing Corporation Ford Tractor Philippines, your long-term agriculture partner. Japan Parts Trading Center. Dash Cargo, propelling possibilities. Phil Flex Wires and Cables. Chua Beng Tang. Alejandro Ko. Jimmy C. Nung Family. Albert Ko. Stephen Sia. 
Rosalina Yasai, Li Hongming, Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. I think my advice to the youth who are having quarter life crisis is to don't pressure yourself too much. You're still young. There's still so many things that that can happen and that will happen. Do things at your own pace, at your own time. Life is not a race. Just know that if you trust the process, it'll happen. This is your own life, so don't compare your life to other people. Well, quarter life crisis is super real, and I feel that people approaching that should consider therapy. Not because they, whether or not they have a mental illness, but because they might need somebody to help them. They say quarter life crisis comes when you're 25. You know, I got my quarter life crisis when I think I was even like 15 when I started modeling. I was a mad person. I was angry with myself for being so ordinary for being like having no ambition so i guess quarter life crisis differs for everyone it, it's not something to say that oh when i reach this age i know i should know what i do you know our timelines are very different especially with chinois you know i know like sometimes our parents set a timeline for all of us like at 30 we have to get married at 20s we have to find our job we have to make ends meet I think it's something we need to respect rather than judge, no? The anxieties of the youth when they get to the quarter life crisis or, or, or when we see that they take so much more time to figure out what they want. It's just a, a product of their upbringing, of the world they were born into. I always like to point out to parents in school, for example, that all our kids are digital natives. When they were born, the internet was already there. So it's not like they have known any other world. This is the world that they know. That's their world, where the possibilities are limitless, where everything is, 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 is just there. We have to understand where they're coming from and help them, accompany them in that journey, in that searching, so that they find their own place in the world. A modern Chinoy is someone who's able to get the traditions and values that they got from the earlier generations and able to adapt it into their own generation. And that is what a modern Chinoy is for. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. Hashtag Beyond Borders was brought to you by Doña Maria Brown Rice, My Kind of Rice, from SL Agritech. BA Securities, your trading partner in Asia Pacific. Dash Cargo, propelling possibilities.